So welcome to the lesson two of our Spring Boot course. This is the basic module where we are looking into the uh, basic uh, things of the Spring Boot application. Okay, let's see what we are going to cover in this uh, lesson. So the first thing what we are going to do is uh, we are going to develop our first Spring Boot application. Uh, this is not kind. Uh, we I'm not going to guide you through the different steps or the uh, other things, but it just want to give an idea what kind of uh, features or when we like if you remember in the last uh, lesson we were talking about the features power and uh, the flexibility of the spring board so we are definitely going to look into a little bit into those details while we create our first spring boot application we're going to look into the layout like what is the standard structure or the project layout of a spring boot application how is different uh, a little bit different we are going to run our Spring Boot application. The idea here is to, uh, if uh, uh, just recall, right? We we said that, okay, Spring Boot application is ready to run application. So we will run our application and then we will going to relate it. What what does that statement meant for? Okay, and then definitely we are going to revisit some of the uh, uh, the features and uh, of the Spring Boot applications. Okay. So I have already created a Spring Boot application. Don't worry about that. When we are going to, uh, in the next chapter, we are going to talk about the setting up your uh, environment, dev environment. We are going to talk uh, more detail about creating a Spring Boot project. What are the different options of creating a Spring Boot project? But for now, I'm quickly going to import the project, okay? So I already have that into the download. Uh, this is a Maven project. Not going to change anything. I'm going to use 1.8. Okay. Right. So one thing which I just want to highlight is I'm using an IntelliJ, but you can use uh, Eclipse, or if you if you have certain other preferences, you are free to use it. It's just a Maven project. It's not going to make any difference. Okay. So. Let's quickly look into the pom.xml file, which is uh, basically the configuration file for you, right? If uh, this is a web project, Spring MVC web project, what if you look into this pom.xml file, right? There is nothing related to the Spring MVC dependencies or the Spring dependencies, right? All I'm saying is just ignore the first part of it. Uh, we will be covering it in uh, more details. But if you look into this one, it says, I have a dependency of a Spring Boot starter pack. So that means what I'm telling Spring Boot is, hey, I want you to create a web application for me. Okay, I have a dependency onto the web modules. Okay, based upon this one, what Spring Boot is going to do for you is, it understands you want to create a web project. So that means you may need a Spring Web, web MBC dependencies. You need the Spring Core dependencies. Uh, you need the logging dependencies. Uh, probably you are also going to use the JSON. So you are also want to use that uh, JSON uh, dependency into your class path, right? So if you see the external libraries, it might be a different view into the different ID, but uh, there is always a dependent uh, jar files. So you can uh, check into the Eclipse as well, right? If I quickly scroll scroll down and let me to increase this one, okay? The interesting part is if you see there was spring dependencies those are automatically added by the spring boot it decided that okay 5.1.2 is the right version for you based upon the spring boot right so you are not thinking about what is the what is the best uh, version you should be using it what is the compatible version uh, you are using it right if you have a past experience working onto the spring or on a web application right you first start thinking about okay what are the dependencies i need okay i need the spring uh, dependencies or for example if you are working on a struts 2 application i need four or five things what else i need okay do i need 2.3 should I need, uh, uh, do I need a Spring 4.1? Do I need a Spring 5, Spring 3? What is the right version for you, right? All those things are automatically going to be taken care of by the Spring. Okay, This is not about the, uh, sorry, with the, by the Spring Boot. Other interesting fact is I was talking about, okay, you need the logging mechanism, right? If you see 
SLF 4G both are there. There is a Jackson dependencies, okay? There is a Tom. Interesting thing is there is an embedded Tom cat in it, okay? This is a web application. You need to deploy this application on some container, right? On some ap application server. Interestingly, it's there. You haven't specified here, right? If you look into your tom.xml, there is nothing related to, I want to deploy this application on a Tomcat, right? You never said, I want Spring 5.1.2. You never said, I need a SL SLF4J or you need a Jackson for that one. There are certain other dependencies. That's the beauty of the Spring Boot. You basically going to tell the Spring Boot that, hey, I need to create a web application and then based upon it, Spring is going to take an approach saying, I think these are the dependencies you should be starting with and then you are free to change, replace, upgrade those dependencies for you, okay? The next interesting thing is our main entry method for the Spring Boot, the Spring Boot, uh, we have I have created this as a Spring Boot first application. So the name of the class is Spring Boot application. Uh, let's skip this Spring Boot annotation for now. The interesting part is there is a main method, right? If if you are a web developer, if you are into the web development, this might be a little shocking for you, right? Hey, there is a main method. If you remember in the first chapter, we were talking about Spring Boot applications are ready to run application. This is one of, this is one of the fundamental difference uh, between working into the spring boot or working into the spring application right and this is ready to run application when i'm saying a ready to run applications let's quickly run our application okay so all i did is simply i'm running my application with a run command there is nothing fancy about it it was a it was a web application or oh, sorry it is a web application right you're not packaging it, you're not deploying it into anywhere, right? You just click onto the run button from your ID. If you want to run through the command line, all you have to do is to run the main method. That's that's all you have to do, right? And if just look into this output, it started that application for us, right? It started a Tomcat server on 8080 port. It deployed that application onto the Tomcat port and we are good to go, okay? I quickly want to show you one, another interesting fact is I have created this REST controller. Uh, this is our first controller. And uh, what I did is I just create, mapped it with the, with the root and then I'm just returning uh, welcome uh, to Spring Boot course. Nothing fancy about it, but what I want to show you is this was a web application. Spring automatically have done all the fundamental things for you. If you if you are more interested, look at this one. Server dispatcher map. You are not defining any server map, right? There is nothing as a web.xml file. You are not. There is no other configuration, right? Where you are saying this is my dispatcher servlet. I need to map this dispatcher servlet to something like that, right? You haven't defined character encoding filter. There is no content. There is no context filter. Everything Spring Boot has automatically configured for you, right? You are more focused on working on your application rather than thinking about, hey, I need to do these 10 steps in order to make sure that my application infrastructure is there. It's already there for you, okay? Let's quickly run our application, okay? Welcome to the Spring Boot application. Nothing fancy, again I said, as I said, but there are a number of different things happening behind the scene. So let's take, uh, let's see what we have covered so far in this uh, lesson, okay? So we basically created our, our Spring Boot application, first Spring Boot application, which is a web application. Idea, like, I'm, uh, what I want to give you an idea is, okay, it's really, really easy to create a web application with the Spring Boot, right? There is nothing, you don't have to go with those, as I said, right, 10 or 20 or 30 different steps to create your web application. It's basically a convention over configuration approach. If you follow certain convention in the Spring Boot application, life will be more easier for you. 
So it's an opinionated approach. That is an interesting terminology, right? That Spring Boot use a lot. What does that mean is, take an example, what we were looking right now. You want to create a web application, you say, you, you tell that to the Spring Boot saying, hey, I want to create a web application. Now, what you need for the web application is, you need the Spring MVC dependencies, you need the Spring dependencies, you need the login dependencies, you need the uh, the uh, the JSON and the XML dependencies because uh, of those all different kind of uh, uh, the mechanisms where you want to pass the information, right? You need to configure a dispatcher servlet for you, you because it's a web application. Definitely, you want to deploy that application onto the some uh, on a container or on a application server, right? Everything was done for you. Spring Boot uh, basically. Uh, selected spring 5.1.2 as the uh, as a base dependency for you it automatically picked the the right uh, json and xml uh, versions for you it automatically picked that okay your application will be deployed onto the tomcat server the embedded tomcat server so this is an opinionated approach based upon your request spring would take an opinion that hey i think that you should like just start with these things i think that in order to start working on the uh, on the web application this is what you need right that's that's how you call it as an opinionated approach if you want to add like say you want to have the have the database capabilities all you have to tell spring that okay hey i want the jpa capabilities spring boot is automatically going to create a in memory database for you and then unless you define a different one it is automatically going to add the transaction capabilities to you. It is automatically going to create uh, those integration for you. So that's that's uh, the power of the Spring Boot, right? Okay. So this gives an uh, a good idea about the some of the some of the standing out feature of the Spring Boot. In the next lesson, we are going to set up our dev environment so that for rest of this uh, course you are basically working side by side uh, on developing a ready or a production deployment Spring Boot application. Just a reminder, this is not going to be a simple hello world application or not going to be a simple application. It is going to have the certain business functionality built into it.